Hey everyone, and welcome to the weekly roundup for Eve Echoes for Saturday the 2nd of September 2023. In these videos, we just quickly go through the news for Eve Echoes and finishing it off with the developer Q&A. So let's get started, shall we? First and foremost, the Ready to Go event that was going on for a little over a month has finally come to a close. That means we're no longer getting the cheaper transaction taxes in Amar and Jita. The insurance orders are not quite so much as they were before. And planetary development mining has dropped back down to its original levels. So you might need to readjust your PI again if, for example, you've got an outpost and you dialed down the fuel production during the event. So, of course, that is out of the way now. We have had on the Eve Echoes YouTube channel, which I will zoom in on this image ever so slightly for, we have had two videos go live over the past week. The first one generated a fair bit more discussion than the other one, let's say, and that was the 2023 anniversary greetings from the official content creators. You can see the thumbnail for it on screen at the moment in this uh, screenshot. NetEase had a little bit of fun, let's say, with changing a couple of names around. Virtual PGE was actually referenced as Virtual Person, and Captain Benzi got a little bit salty with his name being spelt incorrectly. Personally, I think it was a good idea. As I recall from one video that I watched, which included a prominent YouTuber known as Joff Strife Hayes, he stated that one way to get people to engage with your content more is to make mistakes and leave them into the video. Well, this certainly worked. There was a lot of content generated by this one video alone, just by changing a couple of people's names. Whether it was an honest mistake or deliberate, doesn't really matter, it did its job. Anyway, so let's move on. We also had the Eve Echoes Voyage Ceremony livestream. Uh, apparently 4,400 people watched it on YouTube, according to this screenshot here. I watched it for about a minute and a half just to get an idea as to what it actually was. Uh, no big deal, just ships moving down a parade with some commentary. If it's something that sounds ideal for you, then go ahead and watch it, but we'll uh, move along. As part of the live stream, we got a number of gift codes added that we can go and redeem in game. And of course, the most important ones being magnificent, spectacular, and inspiring. Those three words give you skill points alongside the Voyage Ceremony supply boxes, which give you insurance points, Lazarus units, and a handful of compilers, which come in handy for leveling up your implants. So if you haven't done so already, head into game, find that redeem button, and claim those three codes. There are other older ones, Serenity and Exuberance, which give you some other rewards as well, but they're not as important as those first three that I listed. And of course, when it comes to the rewards, here's an example of what you get in-game. 80,000 skill points alongside that box. Again, this is just a quick demonstration. Now, moving on, we have the market with the Plex report. Plex appears to have surged once again to almost 5 billion isk. My best guess for this surge back in uh, Plex prices is the end of the Ready to Go event. If you recall, on the Ready to Go event, more insurance orders were being generated by the system. I suspect this reduced the demand on Plex, although I'm completely guessing here. Please don't take this as gospel. I'm just guessing here because. I don't see any other immediate demand in-game that has been created over the past three days for Plex. So that's my guess. So at the moment, we're sitting at around 5 billion. 5 billion? Wow, that'd be expensive. No, 5 million. Sorry, guys, if I scared you with 5 billion there. So moving on, we have the developer Q&A, which, as per usual, I never pre-read these. So you are getting an honest reaction from me, even if it happens to be... The question and answer being identical in it me taking a few moments to realise that. That has happened. If you want to find out when, head back to a previous video and it won't take you long. So anyway, all these appear to have been answered by NetEase Cloud. So let's uh, start with question number one. For AI mode, can we make orbit options such as optimal, custom distance or off? 
since it causes some ships to be useless currently because it has optimal range orbit as its default mode. Thank you for your suggestion on optional AI orbit distance. We will continue to update AI to make it more efficient. Personally, it's not really needed. If you're setting up the AI and you know the AI is going to orbit the target and it's going to orbit it say 15 or 20 kilometers, just change your fitting. Change your fitting so that it actually works with that orbit. Me personally, when I do my AI ratting with a ball gun, I have everything set up so it can just demolish stuff at 15 kilometers because the, the, that's the range that my salvager module pulls me into. It's, it's not too difficult. But anyway, let's not focus too much on the AI nanocore. Question number two. Hi devs, could you please add a new implant that increases jump range etc of capital ships please? It would mean that caps can jump further and would have to make a choice over increased range or increased DPS from the implants. That would be interesting. I'm, I'm not in favour of just giving it a flat out stat boost, but if the implant said you get a bonus to your jump range of say 30%, at the cost of 30 to 40 percent of your total DPS or of your total tanking capacity or maybe it takes up all of your low slots or something daft like that. I'd be in favour of that. I'm always in favour of uh, making these exchanges, getting one buff in exchange for a penalty. Hence why I like the general unit so much. It just gives you more customization without you constantly raising the ceiling. But anyway, the answer, and I'm going to have to pause for a sec because the cat is using the wardrobe as a scratch post. And now that's sorted, let's get back to the answers. So the answer, thanks for sharing your thoughts with us. We are gradually adding more types of implants and mobility focused implants are one of the popular proposals. So yeah. Mobility focused implants. This will be an interesting one, I guess. I don't know what, what exactly we're going to see. Maybe. Ah, yes. Exploration capitals. Maybe that is where mobility focused implants are going. We, we did see a developer kind of, um, you know, uh, take some interest in that in a previous QA, if I recall. But anyway, jokes aside. More implants, more choices, there's no complaints there. So moving on to question number three. Would you like to implement the idea of adding a private security box at one chosen station? It can add it as an Omega option and players pay a monthly fee. We can use it to store items that we don't want to sell or reprocess by mistake and have them easily at hand. Thank you. Um, A? I, what, uh, this is such a weird, uh, um, I apologise if uh, the, the person asking this question takes offence here to my confusion, but what I tend to do is, there's a station in Torinos, it, it, it can, you can use any NPC station under the sun, but for me I chose a station in Torinos, and in that station, every single item that I don't want to accidentally uh, destroy you, you know like some kind of event exclusive item for example I put in that one station and I know not to destroy anything that goes into that station I don't have to pay an extra form of Omega or a monthly fee to stop myself from destroying items in that station I, I, I mean yeah we can give the devs more money if we want but there are other ways so anyway, let's have a look at the answer. We're actively working on developing this feature, but it's going to take some time because it involves a lot of different systems and testing. We don't have an exact timeline for when it will be available, but we'll definitely keep you posted on any updates. I... I, I honestly... Wow, okay. Um, I, I don't have many more words to say there other than just put everything in one station and remember that one station is, is the do not delete station. It, 
It's what I've been doing for three years and I've never accidentally deleted anything in there. Or sold anything. Or... Let's move on, shall we? I could rant a wee bit about that one. So, moving on to question number four. Love the new Navy frigates. Are there any plans to add more frigate-only content or update existing content, for example, faction war games, to make use of these new ships? The answer? Hey, we're glad that you're digging into the new f Navy frigates. Our team is already looking into the ways to add more frigate stuff. We hear you and we'll definitely keep you posted as things progress. Yeah, um, I'm glad to see that they're looking at frigate related stuff that they can add to the game. It'll just be interesting to see how they bring that about. Again, small ship content, I tend to prefer that because it's lower risk, a bit more mobility, you can get more content in quicker if you like roaming around or whatnot. Let's move on to the last question. Hello developers, when will you bring Covert Ops Cloaks to mining ships? The Venture series of ships needs some love for those of us that enjoy the ship. Another suggestion is to add a third mid slot and scanning bonuses to the Venture 3 and 4. Doing this will give more of a reason to fly the ship and also clear out the vast amount of Nihilus space in New Eden. Thank you for your time. That is a very valid point. Whenever I actually go out to do a bit of exploration on my exploration tune, the majority of sites that I find are these low-level uh, compressed or nihila space um, anomalies. And nobody runs them because you can't go in with a mining barge. You have to go in with a venture in some of these lower-level ones. And the ventures just aren't profitable enough to go in with at the moment. The, it's just, it's hard to describe, but let's have a look at the answer. Answer, the Venture 1 to 4 models are basic versions and do not have the Covert Ops cloak feature, but it is possible that advanced models in the future may utilize this technology. So he's not confirming here that we're going to be getting the Venture Covert Ops. What he's saying is, based on the current design of the game, the Venture 4 won't be getting the Covert Ops feature, but if we see a Venture with a Covert Ops cloak in the future, it will be a new ship, if that indeed happens. It's a very... I'd like to see it. I'd like to see a Venture Covert Ops, or just give the Venture 4 the Covert Ops cloak capability straight off the bat. Either one would work, but anyway, that pretty much sums up the developer Q&A with a uh, little bit of cat scratching the wardrobes. But anyway, thanks again for listening guys and stay tuned for the next video.